Hello there. If you have not seen my miniature windows video, <sighs> now would be a good time to go check it out because we're going to go on doing some decorative fixed panel draperies. And what that basically means is these are going to be fixed in place. They're not going to be movable. You can make movable ones. I'll show that down the road. But in this video, I'm just going to go over how you can do a simple fabric fixed drapery behind your miniature window just for decorative purposes to make it look really cool. This is an example of what I've already done. If you want to watch us make these specific miniature windows, you can watch OW Art Live number 36. These are fitting inside of this diorama that I am working on for one of my clients. I want these two windows to look like they're part of the same apartment, so I'm going to use the same fabric. This is the original template that I made out of a piece of cardboard to trace and cut out my windows so they're all the same size. I cut out an additional one using this and traced it onto a piece of cardboard to use as backing for my drapes. I'm not going to use my template, I'm going to save that. But <clears throat> if you go to Walmart or any other fabric store, you can get cutoffs and strips and different things. I got some strips of fabric and it comes in a package that looks like this. There's two of these and I took one off and unrolled it and you get all these cool strips of fabric. I just picked the one that I like the most for this diorama, but you can see you get all different types of mix and match things. If you don't like anything they have in these, you can go pick up these fat quarters. I have remnants of these I saved just for making uh, decorative pieces like this uh, very simply, but we're actually gonna use something that I normally hate, which is hot glue. Hot glue is the devil, my nasty hot glue gun, but it works great for this purpose. We're trying to affix this in a way that hot glue actually does work well for this. So let me show you what we're doing. So I took that original strip I had and I cut it, and I didn't worry about it being perfect. I mean, you can, if you want to be OCD and cut all your lines perfect, you can, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to trim it all off later, and you'll see what I mean. But I took that strip of fabric and I cut it into four equal pieces, and that happened to be just a little bit longer and taller than the height of my window here, my window template. And that is great because we're going to be pleating this fabric over this and then we're going to be flipping it over and trimming off the excess. So I'm sure you can already see where I'm going with this. I'm just going to draw this center line here for reference. And that's just going to act as a guide. We want these points in this fabric to line up, so we just want to make sure that our vertical alignment uh, is nice and it's not too off, like it actually, like all of these points kind of line up across the pleats as we do it. But we're going to start with our fabric flipped over this way, and I'm going to put a bead of glue about a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch back from my center line. And then we are going to press our fabric onto that, well, not in a tilt like that, but we're going to press our fabric onto the hot glue like that. You can see when you pick this up now and fold this back, it's held in place and you can roll this over and hold your pleat down so that when it's got pressure on it, it touches right up against your pencil line. So what we're going to do, I bet you can guess the next step, is we're going to put a bead of glue on this seam line that I created here. And we're going to fold it back over again. Make sure everything is where we want it and then press it down in place. And there is our first pleat. You can see that that's nice and secure. We've got two beads of glue holding this down and we're gonna do this. Each, each of these fabric widths requires me to do this twice on each side. Obviously, if you start with a larger piece of fabric, you won't have to use four pieces of fabric like I will, but <clears throat> we're just gonna keep repeating this process for this next one, you have to kind of feel where your bead of glue ended up. You're going to want to go about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch behind that. Put down your bead of glue. Fold this back over. Make sure that your drapery fold is parallel to the edge of your template. Press it down. Wait a sec. I am using a high-temp hot glue. I feel like with this, the high-temp hot glue grips the fabric a little bit better. A low-temp hot glue might not get that glue as malleable as you want. And then we're gonna put a glue line about a, right behind that pleat. And we're gonna fold this back over, make sure everything is lined up. And there's our two little pleats. And we basically just 
repeat this process with another strip on the fabric here and we mirror image it over here. So we'll show you what that looks like. There's our first side, and don't worry about any of this. We're gonna take care of that later. There is our basic pattern layout. Obviously you can fiddle with yours as much as you'd like. I'm satisfied with this. But then what we're gonna do is trim off that excess. Simplest way to do that is with very sharp scissors. I like these tiny little scissors because I can get around corners a lot easier. I have bigger ones, but for this, these tiny ones work perfect. can see when we stack our window over it and press down everything sets into place nicely of course if you wanted to you could add little tie backs and tassels to this you could add a valance you could open them up and put some blinds in the middle whatever you want but this is perfect for my purposes I think this looks really nice I think it's got sort of a chic metropolitan feel to it but it's also going to fit the environment that I'm putting it in and that's kind of what I'm going for and of course, when you're ready, you can anchor this into your diorama. I'll be waiting until I, of course, paint and weather all the brick, probably be gluing these things in the last, one of the actually very last steps that I do. But do you see, just adding that fabric adds dimension and depth and makes it look like there maybe is somebody living behind those drapes who pulls them back. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. And of course, you can do them your way. You can add on to them, do a different fabric, add more detail. But I think these are gonna look really, really cool on the finished piece. and. I hope the client likes them. I hope you learned something new in this video or you got an idea that inspired you in your own way to do your own thing. You can watch me build this start to finish and see this whole process I got going on behind me. Leave any questions, comments, complaints, or concerns in the comments below. Thanks so much for coming by. Happy draperying. Happy draperying. Happy draping. Happy draperying. Draperying. Is there a term for that? Happy draperying, everyone.